from Las Vegas, it's The Q. Covering EMC World 2016. Brought to you by EMC. And welcome back here on theCUBE as we continue our coverage from EMC World 2016 inside the Sands Expo here in beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. With us is a, a long time uh, and a familiar face uh, here on theCUBE, Jack Rondoni. Jack, good to see you. Good the see Vice you President of Storage Networking at Brocade. I'm along with Stu Miniman here as yeah. well. Uh, first off, before we get, get into, you know, flash is the word here, Jack, this week, obviously, but uh, you're feeling on the show, the vibe, um, just what's been your two-day take so far? Yeah, I know, it's a good vibe. It's a good vibe. It's good to see, uh, you know, the, the, the Dell insertion and all this and, and how that's been received very positively. Um, so I think that was very reassuring to everybody involved. And, you know, it's a good vibe. I mean, there's, there's a lot of fun stuff happening in storage, um, which is near and dear to my heart. Um, there's uh, lots of fun. Um, interesting things being done around, you know, the, the Unity launch certainly, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, you know, it's a great vibe. It's a great vibe. It's a very much a a key point of moving to the future with these uh, two companies, right? And uh, you know, we're excited about that because we've had great partnerships with both EMC and Dell over the years, and we're looking forward to leveraging that in the future. Well, I mentioned uh, the outset of you know, Flash has been kind of one of the hot topics here. Sure. Um, I'm going to let you pat yourself on the back here in, yeah. in just a bit. I mean, uh, this was almost like the Babe Ruth moment. You called that shot a I few did. years ago. Why don't you go ahead and play it back uh, yeah, for us? Let's was, go back three years. It was June 10th uh, of 13th uh, on this show, right? I think Stu was there. And yeah, I basically said, because I, I really believed it at the time, and I still believe it, I said, Flash will be as disruptive in the data center as server virtualization. That was my specific quote, and you can find it on YouTube somewhere. <laughs> um, and it's true. I mean, it's just flat out true, right? And and I knew that before I had, you know, coming here, um, because every customer I go to, if they don't already have a massive amount of flash in their environment, they have plans to move their entire environment to all flash, right? And the and the and the fascinating thing is, it's not just all performance. Performance is a part of it, but what it does is allows better efficiencies. They reduce their storage footprint. They reduce their power consumption. It's just one of those few obvious value propositions that sticks right. in IT. There's a lot of them that have been talked about that kind of don't make it or they become a buzzword bingo, uh, but this one is it, right? And, um, and I, I felt that way back in uh, three years ago and we've aligned a lot of our, almost the, the vast majority of our roadmap and our features and our capabilities towards that trend and uh, we're going to build on that in the future. So we're very excited about it. We're very excited about this transition to all flash because of what it means to our customers. And what does it mean, so going forward then, yeah. you know, what does the trend mean to their requirements and what they're going to be needing? Yeah, so, so a couple of things. Um, and, and I'm not going to start with performance, I'll end with performance. One is, you know, the network definitely needs to have the right um, kind of instrumentation built into it. Meaning that if you think about a fabric, you have a bunch of sensors, you have a bunch of telemetry into it. Um, you know, when you start running these very, very high speed performance devices, ensuring you have that end to end flow information um, working um, and, and instrumented, that you're even measuring it's very important. And so what we always go say, if you're going to go and upgrade the net or upgrade your, your device to all flash, you got to upgrade the network, right? So that's one of the requirements. Um, automation built into it, right? You're getting efficiencies of this. You don't want to spend time on the network. I can't tell you how many customers have gone, Jack, the last thing I want to do is spend any time in your network. It should just plug in and work. Mm -hmm. We spend a lot of time on automation um, and then obviously we spend time on performance. Right, so you, big announcement uh, with uh, uh, Gen 6, yep. uh, flash channel switch that you've launched. What, you know, new and improved, right? It's always new and improved. Why, how new and how improved? I mean, sure. what distinguishes it from the product you had before? All right, so we launched our Gen 6 uh, fiber channel switch with EMC on uh, April 11th of this year. Um, so what's new is the instrumentation. It's got a lot of uh, 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 information coming out of the fabric to ensure that this you know, Porsche class kind of performance device can actually, uh, um, will not be bottlenecked by the network, that's one thing. It's got, you know, obviously it's got speeds and feeds, it's got 32 gig uh, fiber channel connectivity, it's got 128 gig fiber channel connectivity, which I know some people say, what the heck am I going to do with that, right? But uh, and obviously ISLs are kind of the initial use case, but we're talking to some uh, NVMe vendors down the road about how to maybe potentially use that. And so, um, um, you know, that's, that's some of the key kind of capabilities. Extra levels of automation, policy automation built into it, so you can just kind of want to like monitor environment, one click and you're, you're off and, and kind of running with it. 
So um, you know, we've aligned a lot of that. We've also aligned a lot of those capabilities with our IP products as well. Mm -hmm. So you know, it's not just dominated by fiber channel. Uh, I mean, Extreme IO's got uh, IP interfaces. We have a lot of customers that are saying, hey, I want this performance, and I want my Ethernet network to perform like that as well. So on our VDX Ethernet Fabric product line, we built in similar automation and storage specific instrumentation to go and really make those systems harm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Jack, maybe talk a little bit more about that because you know, I, I said a number of years ago, the storage protocol wars are dead. They're yeah. over. Most customers I talk to, they buy a solution. Happens to have certain you know, speeds, feeds, reasons why you have it. There, there, there's of course technical reasons why you might want to choose them, but most customers I talk to, you know, they go to their partners, they, they go buy a solution set, um, and you know, it varies what they need. But yep. uh, you know, it, 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 are you seeing that when you've got you know, kind of both the fiber channel and the IP side? Absolutely, yeah. Stu, so I could not agree with you more. Yeah. Any conversation that is, well what about IP versus FC? Wrong conversation. Wrong conversation. In fact, most customers are not having that conversation. It's not an either or, it's a both. And then in, in the end, it's going to be, well, what's the workload? You know, traditional workloads, a lot of them are built on fiber channel, they're going to stay around for some time, so you got to deal with fiber channel. Um, a lot of the new, you know, platform three type of workloads are built only on IP, so you're going to only talk about IP. Um, so that conversation is clearly a both conversation, and that's why Brocade's investing in both protocols for the foreseeable future, right? Mm -hmm. So, so uh, fiber channel's obviously been such a driver, you know, in yep. terms of innovation and, and storage. Um, why do you think Gen 6 is, is going to be the home run? I mean, what, what's going to be, I guess, uh, the secret sauce there that, that's really going to vault it to the kind of prominence that I'm getting from you that you feel is yeah. ahead of it? So a couple things. One is, you know, those capabilities around instrumentation performance that, that I, I talked about, right? It's just, it's unparalleled, right? Which is, by the way, why, you know, according to Gartner and some other analysts, you get a higher attach rate actually with fiber channel on the all flash than you've had on the, on the um, uh, hybrid arrays typically, right? You know, the other thing too is, you know, we're, we're looking towards the future to make sure all of that plumbing work that we're doing and instrumentation work is going to be ready for NVMe over fabrics, mm -hmm. right? And actually, I'm going to go out on a limb right now and say three or four years from now, NVMe is going to be about as disruptive to the data center right. as all flash was. So we'll see if that plays out. Um, but um, I certainly believe that because performance just, just it creates opportunities. It, it's, and, and so what we're doing with our fabrics is to make sure it's plumb for that future. We've demonstrated the ability to go do that over fiber channel today. We're working on our ethernet products as they sort out some of the standards issues to make sure that that works as well. But the phenomenal performance, you're going to be a microsecond you know, kind of response times, right? And um, I think that's going to be a phenomenal transition as well. And we want to be a part of that. We want to make sure our fabrics, our data slash memory fabrics, right, are optimized for that. And by the way, it'll still run your legacy workloads, mm -hmm. right? So you don't have to go and shut off your 3,000 applications that are running your business. You can go and you can move that forward then as basically as your business dictates. Yeah, so Jack, there's two ends of the spectrum I want you to give us a little bit of understanding as to how kind sure. of NVMe and maybe Fiber Channel fit in. On one, you know, you talked about super low latency. We're seeing architectures like EMC's DSSD, that's you know, pulling everything super close to the compute, where Correct. today I really don't have much of a network. It's internal, uh, it's doing that, maybe PCIe extension, something like that. On the other end, you've got kind of the hyperscale, you know, you've got SaaS application, you've got public clouds, where once again you said, you know, usually go into IP. You know, how, how does that fit in? How do we see the market developing going forward? Yeah, I think, um, you know, it's, it's a big question, right? And so, let's start with a, kind of maybe the hyperscale kind of side of things. I think in the end, it, it's, it's all about how the application's built. If you build an application on Cloud Foundry, platform as a service, where the inherent um, capabilities of the application can handle, let's say, resiliency problems, it can handle the performance problems, you build on anything you want, right? And that's the power of that, right? And, but that's going to take a long time to kind of go get there, right? And once you can go get there, then you don't need the, you know, thousand engineers to make that stuff run perfectly, right? So I think that's kind of where that goes long term. And then I think on the, you know, NVMe from PCI Express, that performance, you know, certainly anytime you run anything in a DAS kind of way, which is essentially as soon as you're running PCI Express, it's kind of like that, um, you're going to get the phenomenal performance, right? But I will say this, at some point, when you're in, tens of petabytes, right, of storage, you're going to want to share it at some level, right? You're going to want to centralize it at some level, the management costs eat up, right? Unless you can do some other things, inject it to the cloud or something else like that, right? And I think, you know, when I look at our fabrics in particular, let's just start with the fire channel fabric, you know, our, our measured latencies are in hundreds of nanoseconds, right? One switch chip, it jumps at 700 nanoseconds. So even through an entire director, you're talking 2.1 microseconds. So 
that's some pretty dang good performance, mm -hmm. even if you go end to end across the fabric. Yes, you'll always get it better if you're hanging right off the bus, but constructing that kind of fabric is a heck of a lot easier to try to construct a real fabric out of PCI Express. That's really an embedded, in my opinion, at least an embedded kind of uh, uh, bus structure. So, and Ethernet's going to be the same thing, right? You got RDMA over Ethernet, you got iWarp, they're going to jam the latencies out of these things, and I think the benefits, you know, of then how I can manage it in a centralized way, I think in the end will probably win over at large scale. You, you touched on this at the beginning of the uh, the interview, but I'd like to go just a little bit deeper about the relationship with EMC and uh, yeah. I mean, your thoughts about, it, especially going forward, you know, yeah. because uh, there could be a, a few changes here and there, obviously. Oh no, they, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But but how would you characterize it then, the partnership? So I would I would characterize the partnership as it's never been stronger. We've never been doing more things with EMC in our history. You know, we're, Stu and I were talking earlier about you know, the early days of fiber channel switching and stuff, and of course that business continues to run and continues to run well. But we have IP storage switches. We have solutions with VxRail. We have solutions on, on, in, in a number a number of different areas. We got Poxco with, with Scale.io. So the partnership has never been broader, and I think when we look at then the, um, the, the merger here coming with Dow, it's, um, to us, we look at it as a tremendous opportunity mm -hmm. because, you know, beyond the technology, one thing our CEO always likes to say is, Brocade knows how to partner better than anybody, mm -hmm. right? And I really do believe that. We've not been a, a partner with EMC for 17 years if we were not a good partner. And guess what? There's lots of divorces that happen in the <laughs> industry, right? So any marriage that's been hanging around uh, for 17 years, that's something special, right? And by the way, we have a tremendous relationship with Dell as well. A tremendous relationship. So we look at it as an opportunity to, to strengthen it as those two become one, mm -hmm. to build upon our partnership, and we're very, very excited about it. All right, well, so, great, great track record. Yeah, ahead, Jack, so. if, just bring us on home. You know, EMC World tends to be the biggest event of the year for Brocade, as you said, very long uh, yeah. history. You know, what's the Brocade presence, sessions, parties, events, you know, how many people <laughs> you guys have here, uh, any cool giveaways? Uh, Can we get invited? You know, you know all, <laughs> all those things. <laughs> all those right, right, right. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we always bring, you know, our, our best worldwide here. We got representatives from Europe, China, um, all of our of our field people, because all of our best customers come here, right, to Stu's point. Um, as far as cool stuff on the floor, I, I, by the way, you walk in and what do you see? You know, you see brocade right there. We got some fantastic kind of demonstrations. Some of our analytics capabilities. Come by and see our, our analytics monitoring platform. It really will show you some, some insights into the data fabric you've never seen before. We're very excited about that. Um, the giveaways are so many, honestly, you know, we don't have enough time to go through them all, right? All right. But go to the booth. Check out what's there. We got our gurus there. We got our subject matter experts there. You'll be very excited about the solutions we have and how well they're aligned they are with EMC and Dell. You talk about giveaways, Stu. When I walked by the Brocade booth about an hour ago and I saw this line stretching all the way around the booth on how well, it must be free beer, free pizza, free something. Uh, Jeffrey Moore uh, signing, crossing the chasm. Yeah. And by far the most popular booth on the floor right now. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah. and, and was that just like a great call for what's going on here, right? Yeah. yeah. What, 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 uh, EMC's talking about modernizing the data center, and it's that kind of, you know, uh, um, just profound kind of thought, right, that I think really resonates, that's why you see that, uh, that crowd all around the corner. Yeah, we're very see. excited to have them here. Well, you called your shot three years ago, you called your shot today, we'll come back and we'll see, see. 2019 and three, see how Three, four years, let's see how three, four years goes, <laughs> right? right? A lot of room there, which, right, is, which is a good, good thing. Jack, thank you for being, once yeah, again, with us my here pleasure, on theCUBE. Thank you. And we'll be back, uh, back with more. Some final thoughts actually coming up here from theCUBE and just a little bit from the Sands Expo here at AMC World 2016.